Hi and welcome back to Garden Ninja for the June update here at Garden Ninja HQ. Now loads has been happening in the garden over the past month and I can't wait to show you it all. So grab a brew and come on, let's get cracking. If you've not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, hit the red button to subscribe today. Also click the bell for notifications. We'll have access to hundreds of garden design, hints, tips and hacks from me, the Garden Ninja. And best of all, it's free. Now this year has been a real bumpy year for fruit here at Garden Ninja HQ and the gooseberries are no exception. If you've followed my guides over the past year you'll know that winter is the prime time to prune gooseberries. Now I've got a number of different gooseberry species, some of them are in the ground, some of them are in containers and they're a fantastic fruit if you've got a small garden. But for some reason people worry that because they've got thorns and they look a bit angry that they're not suitable or convenient. But these are probably one of the toughest fruit bushes you can grow. Now, if you followed that video you know that I pruned this last winter and a lot of people said I can't believe that you've pruned it taken all this growth off it how is it ever going to fruit but as you can see down here it's been prolific and gooseberries really do respond well from the correct pruning technique in winter and that's about cutting out two year old material and greater so anything over two years you nip back and then I tend to tidy things back by a quarter to an outward facing bud where possible and look you just end up with loads of delicious fruit Now we have a new visitor here at Garden Ninja HQ, which is a new hedgehog. So one of my friends is a vet nurse, and someone brought in a hedgehog that had been abandoned. So it's been cared for at the vets, and now it's made its way here to Garden Ninja HQ for a second chance at life. I've built a hedgehog hotel out of an apple crate, which I've covered with a bit of plastic just to keep it dry. It's been stuffed full of leaves, and Mrs. Hedgehog went in there last night. So fingers crossed, she's gonna make herself a really nice home here where she can forage to her heart's delight and maybe even have some baby hedgehogs. Fingers crossed. Now June is a perfect time in the garden to show one of the key principles of good garden design and that's repetition. In the granite garden behind me you'll see that I'm repeating blues and purples using the monochromatic colour spectrum where you take colours next to each other on the colour wheel and repeat them and it causes a really calm harmonious feeling in any design or styling that you're going to do. And by doing this it brings a garden together. Here in this giant raised granite bed you'll see that I'm using the same species of plants and colours on repeat throughout the entire border, meaning that when you look at it, it feels cohesive. So if you're designing your own gardens or rejigging some of your flower beds, a good rule of thumb is to try and repeat the same species of plant and or colours to help bring it together. It can be tempting just to take one of this and one of that, but as you well know, if you followed my guides, you'll end up with a pick and mix garden. So June is a prime time to look out into your gardens and see where you might need a bit more repetition. If you can't see any, it might mean that you need to rejig the garden and have a think. But don't panic, it's just an opportunity to hone and improve your garden design and planting skills. It's time for an update on the gunnera that I planted a couple of months back. And if you look down here, you'll see that it has put on some growth. It's still not the giant specimen that it's going to be in a couple of years. But the beauty with this gunnera is in the first year, it's going to put on all of its root growth. So although we've got a few small leaves, all the efforts are going into putting the roots out ready for next year. And with big plants like this, it's important that you're patient because they're not going to suddenly put on six metre tall leaves in year one. You have to give them some time. So this year, it's probably not going to get much bigger than maybe a large dinner plate and then next year a bit bigger. And then the year after, it should start to get near towards juvenile size. But this is a really interesting specimen and I can't wait for this to take over this part of the garden. So watch this space. And if you're growing things like gunnera or large plants, let me know below if you need any advice as to how to grow them. Now the exploding atom garden is really coming to its own. It's about three years old now in terms of planting. Four years old if you consider the whole year it took me to design it, dig out the borders and get the structures in like the gabions in the trees. But it's really starting to feel settled. 
all of the herbaceous perennials are knitting together and that's just the way I like it. And the reason for that is it helps crowd out weeds. And if you've got a larger garden space, like I have, and you're lucky enough, then growing things en masse is a really good way to get high impact and also reduce some of that maintenance that us gardeners moan on about so much. And my top tip whenever you're designing a new garden is to have patience. We can often, as gardeners, rip things out after a year or two because they don't seem to be doing what we expect them to. But really with herbaceous perennials, trees and shrubs, you need to leave them for a good two to three years to see how they establish and mesh together. If we keep editing the garden every year, we're never really going to settle on one style. So my top tip is be a bit lazier and have some patience. In the centre of the Exploding Atom Garden, we've got the hot inner ring. And all of these plants have been chosen by me for late season interest. And it's a good tip that if you're starting a garden from scratch, try and make sure that you've got plants that are going to flower at different times throughout the year. But if you're clever, you can plan your garden so that every month of the year, something is happening. And in this inner ring, it's all about the hot colour planting palette. Reds, oranges, yellows, and these all fire up from the beginning of July all the way through to October. And this adds that red hot inner ring to the exploding atom garden, which is part of the concept design of this garden. So always have a think about your garden in terms of months and how you're going to extend those seasons. If you've got fruit trees at home, June is the month where you should start to see fruit emerging. As you can see behind me here, we've got all sorts of little small apples appearing on my orchard. Now I prune my orchard twice a year. The summer prune I do late August, early September, which is just to reduce some of the growth. And the summer prune will always help restrict the plant. I then prune again late winter, January, February time here in the UK. And that's to encourage growth. So summer restrict, winter encourage. And if you prune them correctly, like I do, keeping them open with lots of air, you'll then end up with loads of beautiful fruit. Now the beauty with fruit trees is that you don't even need huge amounts of space. I've yet to find a garden in an urban centre or a city garden that can't accommodate at least one fruit tree. And that's because you can pick the size of the rootstock which controls the growth. In this part of the garden, we've got four apples, we've got a cherry, a plum and a pear. And this part of the garden is only about two metres wide by maybe eight metres long. And that's all because I've picked fruit trees on a small rootstock that aren't going to get huge. If you prune them twice a year, you can keep them neatly controlled and bring all sorts of wildlife to the garden. So if you haven't already chosen a fruit tree, what's stopping you? Now I've also got some other really exciting news. And if you've been following me on Instagram, and other social media accounts, you'll know that I've been undertaking a journey by training to keep bees. Now I've got my two hives behind me, and you can buy them pre-built, but I decided to buy them in kit form so that I could build them myself to help me learn more about the home of bees. Now I've been on a course now for the past six months and my bees arrive in a few weeks and I'm super excited because hopefully by keeping bees I can help the honeybee population of the local area but also help the garden because the bees are going to cross pollinate all of my gorgeous plants which will allow me to kind of close the loop on the garden. I already compost all of my own waste, I've grown most of my plants from seed and now I'm introducing bees to help pollinate them and keep that cycle going. Because by keeping bees it will help pollinate plants for around a three mile radius all the way around the garden. So it's win-win and it's a fascinating hobby. I can't wait to get stuck in. If you fancy keeping bees, make sure you check out your local beekeeping association. I wouldn't recommend just buying a hive and winging it. It's really quite precise. So I'm going to be sharing my progress as a new beekeeper and I can't wait for my first queen and some of those frames of brood to arrive to start me off on this journey. I think it's going to be absolutely fascinating. We're here up at the wildflower meadow at the top of the garden and it really is in full swing at the moment. And I know I keep teasing you saying I'm going to do a full update but I need to wait one more month until July when everything is singing and doing its best. But I'm going to give you a sneak peek now just so you can see how it's progressing. But... 
But let's not forget, this meadow is only in year two. So I'm thoroughly chuffed with the progress of it. It's doing really well, but I reckon by next year, it's gonna look absolutely insane. Have you got gardening questions that you need answers for? Well, why not head over to the Garden Ninja Forum on my blog, where you can ask me anything about gardens, plants, and garden design. There's a whole army of other garden ninjas there that can help provide answers to your questions. And it's a really great way to meet the other ninjas. So head over there now. And that brings us neatly to the end of the June tour here at Garden Ninja HQ. If you've liked this video, please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel where there are hundreds of garden design hints, tips and hacks to help you and your friends make your gardens awesome. If you've got comments, please pop them down below because I love to hear back from you. Or you can use the online Garden Ninja forum. Anyway, I'm off to enjoy my garden. Happy gardening. <laughs>